Hey everybody, Andrew here from Pacific Coast Auto, taking a look at the results of last week's auction picks. Up first, the Mazda RX-7. Derek just about nailed this one. It went for less than $100 over his guess, selling for $8,340. The CRX went for much less than expected. That one sold for $3,570. The Toyota Town Ace Wagon also went pretty cheap. That one sold for $1,300. The Porsche 911 was unsold, only having been bid up to $18,810. The Toyota Supra was unsold with no bids. I guess that starting price was just a bit too high for anyone to jump at. The Subaru Impreza STI also didn't get enough attention to sell. That one was only bid up to 4310 There was zero interest in the Nissan Micra. It was unsold with no bids. The Nissan Bluebird went for more than double Derek's guess. That one sold for 9950 And finally, someone got a deal on the Toyota Crown Majesta. That one sold for $720. If you've been watching our Facebook page, you know that this week is round two of the current auction picks contest. Up next, Derek is going to go over the round two submissions for the contest. In two weeks, we're going to reveal the winner and what the prize is. Good luck, everybody. Here's Derek. Hey, guys. I'm Derek, and we're going to look at your auction picks in the special limited edition super awesome version of this video where you guys get to win free stuff. And we did this one two weeks ago where you need to submit your auction picks and then you have to guess your price and if you guess the price that's closest to the actual sales price of that vehicle then you get to win a mystery box of goodies now last week and this week we had a little bit of a uh, problem with some customers not reading the rules the rules stated that you couldn't pick cars from the uss auctions because they don't let us display their uh, vehicles in the video here otherwise they're going to snatch our license away from us and that would kind of ruin our company and so we don't want to do that so don't send those ones in please also uh, if the car has been at auction before then it doesn't count because then you can see what the highest price was last time and get a better idea of the selling price for that one. And also, um, some people were sending in cars from the wrong date, like for example today or, or from yesterday or whatnot. And uh, big sorry to Flavian, you said that you wanted to send this one in. I know you're watching this. You wanted to send in a pick for this one. Uh, yours had already been at auction before, and so. Uh, tough beans for you you don't get to participate but to everyone else he said that if he wins then he wouldn't even take the prize because he lives in japan and i guess it's not that special to get a box of japanese stuff if you live here anyways we got 13 people last week uh not last week two weeks ago we did the first round of it and we're going to take the closest uh the closest guest from that video and from this video and so I think that video, the closest guess was somewhere around 13 or 15 or 17 percent or so. So there still is a good chance that somebody's going to win it from this video. So let's see what you guys got. 13 picks here. <clears throat> First one here, Bill Courtney. And we got a bit of a long note from Bill here, so I'm going to read that off. He says, I'm going to be a meanie to Derek and, other, and uh, pick another Toyota Mark II, in brackets, evil laugh, and then rolling laughing emoji. 1993 with slush box and 63,000 kilometers on the clock. Low mileage, uh, lower mileage than my first entry, but this one's got issues with the interior. Three alloys and one steely and a dreaded Pep Boys steering wheel cover. Last one sold for 88. I guessed 99-ish last time, so I'm guessing 77 on this bad boy. Okay, so here's what we got. It's Mark II, automatic as he said. Looks like, yep, the one spare is on there instead of the regular wheel, and the wheels have the hubcaps missing. Yep, looks like the interior has a little bit of work that needs to be done to it. And let's have a look at the auction sheet. This will really tell the condition of it. So it's a 1993 Mark II. It's in August, so not quite importable, but it might may actually be. If you input the VIN number in here, you might be able to tell if it is importable to the USA or not. And that's going to make the price change big time because these cars are just barely legal for the US, and that should increase the price even though this is the 2.0-liter inline six-cylinder engine, not the cool twin-turbo 2.51 JZ that does come in these. And so looking at condition, it's the grade 3.5 with an interior D, 62,000 kilometers. Body is a little bit weak, U3 on the side sill here. Looks like somebody tried to jack it up and jacked up from the wrong spot on the side. Audio is removed, dashboard glue marks and ripped, corrosion on the underside, uh, saggy damper on the back headliner is sagging down large and Bill guesses on this one 77,000 yen and I think that that's a pretty accurate guess 
on this one. So we'll see about that. Next one, Yelmari. Rypolina sent in this one. It is a Toyota Century. He said, my love for luxury and road barges continues. This is going to sell for 385,000 yen is what he guessed. It's a 2001, and then the 2001 has the 5 liter V12. The 5 liter V12 is not a particularly popular engine for engine swaps or anything like that, but it is a, the ones with the V12 tend to hold their value better than the older ones with the V8 in it instead. Body is in great shape. Mileage is rather high for one of these cars at 86,240, but the auction grade is 4 with an interior grade B. The battery is dead. The, it has fender mirrors. That's kind of cool. Fender mirror car. And then, um, what does this say? Combination panel. What? I can't read what that says. Something panel that has deformation or something. Probably. Probably they're talking about the wood panel has some sort of deformation or is coming up or something. Cool looking interior. It doesn't look like a car that would be as expensive as this car is. It's very mundane, but that's kind of the charm of these cars. And so 385,000 yen, I believe is going to be a little bit low, but we'll see about that uh, next next week, because next week we're off. Next one from Yit Raymond Yu sent in this. This looks like a bit of a tough pick if you're going to try to get the price accurate, because classic cars vary in condition so much. That means they also vary in price so much. And without being able to re read the auction sheet here, it's hard to tell what the condition actually is. And then on top of that, even if you know the condition, classic cars like this, especially 70s Japanese cars, they tend to sell for very fluctuating prices, even if the condition is the exact same. Okay, so Raymond says, Toyota Corona 2000 GT rare JDM muscle, which is kind of funny because 2000 CC is not very muscular. <laughs> Um, which still alive in decent shape, good for U.S. buyers. He guesses 750,000 yen. I think you've got a pretty good guess on that one, Raymond. Okay, uh, condition-wise, mileage is unknown. The body is generally pretty good with peeling paint, which is a little bit weird because I think that this is a 1976. I think that was before clear coats on these cars. And so peeling paint means it has been repainted. Oh yeah, color change to orange. Okay, and then C1 on the side here. Light corrosion. Looks cool with the Watanabe wheels and the sports tires on there. It kind of looks like a four-door version of my second car, which is a 78 Celica. Has very similar looking round, dual round headlights like that. Kind of a cooler looking car than the Celica though. Similar but cooler. Okay, manual transmission. They don't say how many gears. I think these had five, but I don't know. And uh, what else we got here? Tools are missing, um, or no, the left tool house has paint marks in it. Okay, so probably rust repairs have been done to these sections here. End panel has been replaced. Engine is shaky, which shouldn't be too much of a big deal for uh, this type of engine. 2000 cc is probably uh, an 8R, 18R. 18R is a 2 liter. Yes, 8R is a 1.8. Okay. Aftermarket, uh, what? Audio, exhaust, suspension, steering wheel, and exhaust manifold. Okay, so I think a pretty good, well, a risky move on picking this one, but a pretty good uh, uh, price pick, I think. On to the next one here, Sean William Bellamy. You're going down, Bill, in brackets, probably not. And then he guessed on this one. Oh, did he guess anything? How much is he guessing on this? I don't know. I think that he is guessing 152,407 yen. Okay, that's correct? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, I think this is a good vehicle to pick for this competition because these sell for a very tight price range. This is original with original wheels, has a dual sunroof, but a five-speed manual. One of the problems with these, though, is they have problems with piston slap for 90 97, 98, 99. Those three years have that problem. And so uh, prices tend to be pretty low for these ones. And not a lot of them exist anymore. This one has five-speed manual, auction rate 3.5 with C, but take a look at this. 
C2 on the back. That's bad corrosion. And then the engine, it says engine sounds. Um, that might be the piston slap. It'll make a clacking sound from the engine. It's not damaging per se. It has to do with like wear of the coating on piston sleeves. And then Subaru got their act together from uh, the year 2000, I believe. Maybe so halfway through 99. Okay, so the guess of 152.407 seems a little bit high for one that has a broken engine. I'm sorry, but uh, I guess if you can't read that, uh, it's hard to guess the accurate price, isn't it? Okay, so I think that that price is going to be over. Next one on here, Mitch Cowie. What do you got, Mitch? I reckon this average condition E36 M3, considering it has repairs, will fetch 940,000 yen. Here's the thing for this one. You want to be very careful about the mid model or the early model and the late model for these because there's a huge price difference between them. This one, oddly, oh, is this an American version? Okay, I don't know what's going on here. This is a 3.2 liter engine, which is late model, but five speed manual, which is early model, because they had a six speed for the late model. Hmm, questions. Maybe the seller was wrong and it actually has a six speed. I don't recall which year that they changed over. It seems like this year would mean a late, not early, late, I don't know. Oh, I feel like I want to use Google right now and I can't. I'm recording a video. I think it's an early model, but maybe that engine displacement is wrong or maybe the transmission is wrong or it's a late model. I don't know, but that's going to matter big time for the price. 940,000 yen seems within reason for an early model but for a late model that would be too little they're usually like 1.5 to close to 2 million yen so it's an R grade has been in an accident close to 100,000 kilometers on here the body is so so I would say maybe 6.5 out of 10 and then front side member has some uh, accident damage and has been replaced front inner panel dented and bent core support replaced abs lamp is on interior liner has been modified and has been uh, like uh, rewrapped you can kind of see the red in here probably some sort of like speakers have been installed in it or something like that headliner is coming off and some other uh, things oil leak seat ripped hmm condition doesn't seem that good price seems a little bit high if it's an early model and a little bit low if it's a late model but i think that there's a chance to win on this one Leslie Lee sent in this one, uh, 1985 Toyota Corolla 11 AE85. So rare to see one nowadays. My guess is 185,000 yen. Sorry for the phone call there. We can't shut down the office for these videos. And we don't have a cool studio. Okay, AE85 is the 1.5 liter version, not the 1.6 liter 4AG engine version. Now, um, Leslie is thinking this one's going to sell for a low price because it's the 8.5 instead of the 8.6. But the fact of the matter is nobody really cares anymore because engine swaps to the 8.6 are fairly easy. And I believe the 8.5 is a fuel-injected engine still, not like the SR5 in the States. Could be wrong about that, though, but that's what I think. Hmm, so rust and corrosion, engine room rust, underside rust and corrosion, engine... Um, and the engine stalls and puffs white smoke. Doesn't matter though, these 8.6s, all that matters is the looks of them and the chassis. And the notch back sells for less, obviously. Sunroof is kind of rare on the 8.6s, especially here in Japan. Uh, one of the ones that we owned in Canada had a sunroof in it, but I haven't seen too many of them here that do. Uh, the brakes are bad, corrosion on the roof. Yeah, condition is pretty bad, so that 185 might it might, be, might actually be pretty close. I guess we'll see on that. 58, 833 kilometers. Why so low? My gosh. Who buys a car like this and owns it for, what, this is a 33, this year it would be 33 years old. And then 58,000 kilometers. Pretty crazy. Next one, Ioanni Esparzo sent in this. Okay, another JZX90. So Bill and Ioanni are fighting these out. And the guess price is actually pretty pretty similar. He says, here's my pick. This will sell for 79,500 yen. 
So this one's a Cresta, and the one that uh, Bill sent in was a Mark II. The styling is a little bit different, but they run the same chassis and the same engine combinations, and they have the same chassis code. I said JZX90, that's the twin turbo version. It's actually GX90 for the Poo Poo engine version of it. It's first time at auction, 120,000 kilometers, auctionary 3.5 interior C. This one's a 94, and so likely, more likely to have a lower price because nobody really wants a 1994 of these. Once it's legal for the US, I can see people getting into it, but I think that right now, I don't think anybody wants one, even with these snazzy rims, which were probably pretty cool back in 94, but nowadays, look weird on the car and the champagne color or the the beige-ish silver color hmm i don't think that that's boosting the price up very much body's pretty clean with some paint peeling on the back and a big scratch in the back corner octanary 3.5 interior c hmm 79 500 yeah might be close Jefferson Paracio. i'm pretty sure that every time that i read that name i'm mispronouncing it he says, good luck, everyone. That's very nice. Thank you. Here's another Stagia as my entry. My guess this time is going to be 63,000 yen. Okay, so it is a Stagia with a 2.5 liter engine. It is the RS4, and so that's the same as the Skyline engine, turbo RB25 engine. Stock exhaust, steel wheels. Not much special about it other than that engine which is really cool but it is an automatic transmission it says prime edition i don't know what that means rs4 prime edition okay auction rate four interior c body is really good headliner is yellowed from cigarette smoking <sighs> seat wrinkles winter tires on it undersized uh, surface rust and painted and audio um Mm -hmm. Body scratches and dents. First time at auction in the last six months. Gets a special stamp on here. And no reserve on this one. That's cool. Starting price is zero yen. So it could sell for ten bucks. Somebody could snipe it off with one bid and win it. It's happened before. Leather interior. I don't find that the leather in these is very high quality leather though. So I would go for non-leather. Maybe that's what the uh, prime edition is. Is the leather inside. Okay, so his guess, 63,000 yen. I think that's a fair, a fair guess on this car. Raymond Liang sent in this one. And actually, two people sent in this one. Raymond Liang sent one in, sent this one in, and Jose Oval. And so this is going to be really interesting because the price that's guessed is very different between the two. So Raymond says, I've always had, uh, I always have, a luck of estimate something. See if I can estimate correctly. I will say this Evo 9 wagon with six-speed manual will cost 465,000 yen. And Jose says, can I still submit my pick? 2006 Lancer Evolution wagon. My guess would be 1,090,000 yen. I think both of those are too little. I think these Evo wagons are what everybody wants because they are super rad. Uh, they only made the wagon for the Evo 9 generation. I think they sell for about the same amount as the uh, Evo 9 does, but most of them are automatic. So finding one with the six-speed manual, that's going to keep the price up. And I've seen automatics in a similar condition to this coming around a million yen, a little bit below, a little bit above. So I think this one with the six-speed, we're looking at close to 2 million. I think that it's going to be closer to about 1.8, 1.9, 2 million for this one. 63,407 kilometers, auction rate 4.5, interior A minus, exterior A minus, very clean body here. And what's this? A tower bar has been put on. Uh oh, don't want to bid on this car anymore. And uh, front spoiler underside has scratches. The Evo 9 is one of the coolest looking of all of the Evos. I really like them a lot. And then having the station wagon version of it, including the wide body. Have a look here. It comes out wide here and then has this extra vent compared to the non-Evo version of the wagon, which they do sell, I think, as a Sedia, Lancer, uh, Lancer Sedia, or something? I don't know. Okay, so, uh, hmm, Jose is closer, I think, on that one. I don't think that either of those are going to win, though. I'm sorry, guys. Next, for, uh, next up is Victor Sancho. I like how easy it is to pronounce your name, so thank you for submitting this. Ooh, 911 is hard to pick a price because they sell for such a high amount that it's, yeah, I mean, 
if the range for something like this is between 4 million and 7 million yen, then you have to be off thousands of dollars for each percentage point. And so I don't know. I don't know if that helps or not. I think that it might be tricky to win this one, though. He says, I am European, so I chose the most iconic European sports car of the 911. His guess is 1.5 million yen, and I think that that's way too low, but we'll see. Let's have a look. Oh, the interior doesn't look that good. Okay, so 1953 makes this a 1978, okay? 1978 version with 2.7 liter engine, auction grade R, and then aftermarket steering wheel and audio and seats. Dashboard is cracked, interior one part painted. Aftermarket wheels scratched, underside has been uh, like a pushed up section, various scratches and dents. Mirror Taratsuki? I don't know what that means. Hmm, sorry. Oil leaked, full repaint including paint wave on the car. Left front pillar is dented. Left front, uh, right front pillar has deformation from the accident damage. Very scratches, dents, and uneven paint. It looks like not a good 911 by the looks of it. Um, sticker on the hood. Sticker on the roof. Love the blending of the sticker here. Good job, guys. Yeah, it looks like the 911 that nobody wants. Corrosion on the hood. It's not terrible. His guess of 1.5. I have a feeling like it'll be closer to like 2.2, .2, so I feel like that's a little bit low. But as, as uh, the case with all of these, we will find out. Next is Davilin Sunasi. And he says, okay, this one is good. 138,000 yen. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, so it's an Alfa Romeo Alfa GT 2.0 JTS Cellus Speed. What? Ex Shibu Exclusive. But the Ku here looks like Ta. Okay. Auction rate 4, interior B, exterior B. 100,000 kilometers. These are generally really good value, and part of the reason for that is because they're very unreliable cars, even more so than my Golf is. I don't know if they're good to drive. They sound good. I've never driven one, but um, apparently they're pretty good. They're front-wheel drive, which is a bit of a shame, but front-wheel drive cars can still be pretty cool. The interiors are really nice, and they tend to hold up pretty well, and Japan has lots of them. So, hmm. I have bought plenty of the earlier model of this. I haven't bought any of this model, though. So I don't know. Earlier model, what I mean by that is like the 157 four-door, but this is a two-door version. Hmm. Price-wise, I think it's, uh, I think that this is a little bit low here, the 138,000 yen. I'm thinking somewhere around 280 to 350, somewhere in there. But I haven't checked the prices, so I don't really know. Under the next one, Justin Thomas. Ooh, G-Class should be an easy one. They sell for very consistent prices here in Japan. There are lots of them. You can look at the data. This is a good one to win with, I think. So Justin Thomas guesses 2.7 million on this. It's Mercedes-Benz G500. Long wheelbase, of course. And it's a 2006. One owner, perfect body. Spare tire cover scratched and dented. Navi-ROM is sent to you so basically a very good condition but with high mileage at 155 to 47 kilometers 2.7 i think is a bit high for this i think we'll see it around 2.3 2.4 but it might be bit up to 2.7 so this is one to watch out for it might be one of the winners and on to one of the winners there's only one winner so it might be the winner i don't know oh this is a cool car hmm and they were never sold in this color, though, as far as I can remember. The Soar is looking better and better, though, isn't it? Hmm. And I like the period wheels. Those would have been kind of like a early 90s, right when 18 started coming in. Are those a 17 or an 18? They kind of look 18-ish. Have a look here. So this is a 1988 Soar, 2000 cc. Uh, they don't say if it's a turbo or a non-turbo, and that's going to affect the price. 
Derek says, all right, this time I have a qualifying contender. I love the GZ20s. My guess would be 210,000 yen. So the GZ is the non-turbo inline six cylinder 2000 cc and this one has an automatic transmission so that's going to keep the price down but oh original wine color really gh1 is the color number let's have a quick look at this i didn't think that this car was ever sold in that color toyota gh1 <laughs> apparently gh1 is also a panasonic camera Let's go Toyota Paint GH1. Hmm. Hmm. That doesn't look like the same color. Almost every time I've ever done a paint lookup like that, I was able to uh, to find the matching look of this color. So. I'm kind of thinking it might be a color change car. And if you were to buy this car and it turns out that that wasn't the original color, then you would, I think, be able to make a successful claim for that because that's kind of a big deal. Comes with the sun roof. They make a really cool version of this called the Aero Cabin, which is a kind of a convertible, but it keeps the C pillars here. But the back window goes down into the trunk. Very cool, but they only made like a thousand of them or so. So paint damage on the hood, roof, and trunk, which would be a big deal if it is not uh, correct paint. And, or not the original paint, P3 on the front fender. You can't really see it, but it's going to be there. Trust this much more than you trust the pictures, because pictures hide things really easily. Exterior has color fade, steering wheel wear, large. Seat has cigarette burn holes, large. Yikes. Headliner is dirty, dashboard glue marks. Aftermarket air filter is modified, bumper underside scratched, and various modifications to the car. This isn't a car that I would want to buy. There's just too much unknown about it. And then being the automatic with the bad engine. I mean, it's not its not a terrible engine. It's just not the good engine. And then Soarers, I think, would be hard to sell unless they have the good engine. But they are good-looking cars, I think. This is the luxury Supra, basically. Okay, and so the guess on this one from Derek Cleverly, 210. Yeah, it might be pretty close. I have a feeling it's going to be slightly higher than that, somewhere around 350, 320, somewhere in there. But again, we'll see. That's the end of the video here, and so good luck to everybody. We're going to be off for the next week because it is Golden Week, and then we're going to be back the week after that to show you guys who the winner is and to show you what you've won because we have been keeping it a secret what we're going to send to you. In fact, uh, we haven't even bought it because some of the stuff might be edible and we want it to be as fresh as possible when we send it out. And so see you guys again two weeks from now if you are the winner we're going to contact you on facebook so make sure that you have the ability to be contacted on facebook if that's a thing some people on the account i think don't allow that but i don't know we'll announce it also on our facebook page so watch out for that if you don't hear from it so that'll be the end of the video everyone so thanks for watching and see you later